Great Lakes Prepping here. If you've watched much of this channel, you know I'm a big fan of vacuum sealing. And while I love my trusty food saver machine, I've just kicked my food storage game up a serious notch. A company called WeVac recently reached out to me. They make vacuum sealing machines and accessories, and I've actually used their vacuum seal bags and rolls for a few years. They contacted me and asked if I'd like to try out one of their new chamber vacuum sealing machines. I said absolutely, and about a week later, this monster showed up at my door along with some vacuum bags and rolls. So in this video, I'm going to unbox and test out the WeVac CV12 chamber vacuum sealer. And we'll also talk about how chamber vacuum sealers are different from standard vacuum sealing machines like my food saver and why someone like me might want to have one. So let's jump right in and unpack this thing. Right away, I can tell you that this is a big, heavy piece of equipment. It weighs about 35 pounds, and I'm not sure I'd even call it a small appliance. Setting it up seems pretty straightforward. The machine came with a bunch of bags and a couple sizes. The heating element for the bag sealing component is packaged separately, and I just need to set that in place. Plug it in, and I think I'm ready to go. There are a few different modes and settings to choose from, which we'll talk about, but I'll mention that I initially had some trouble figuring out how to turn the machine on. Well, not exactly turn it on, there is a power button on the side, and the display is obviously lit up, but I couldn't get it to a state of being ready to vacuum seal. I eventually figured out that I need to hold the power slash stop button for a couple seconds, and that basically wakes it up, which is now made apparent by the AU displayed on the screen. Not sure what AU means here, but according to the instructions, this means it's ready to use. Real quick, let's talk about the differences between a chamber vacuum sealer like this and a classic suction machine like my food saver. And I'm gonna use some plain old green beans to demonstrate. A food saver is very simple. It uses a small vacuum pump to suck all the air out of your bag, and then a heating element melts the bag closed. A chamber vacuum sealer is quite a bit different in that it's not sucking air out of the bag. Once you put your bag into the chamber, it sucks air out of the chamber, both inside and outside of the bag itself. After the inside of the chamber is a complete vacuum, a heating element seals up the bag. And then finally, the chamber decompresses, thereby releasing the vacuum. Now, the moment the vacuum is broken, the bag instantly implodes. That is, it shrivels up super tight against your food, much like you'd expect to see after using a food saver type machine. It makes me think about movies where they're in a submarine or deep sea research station or something. They're under incredible pressure and if their vessel's hull is breached, the people inside basically implode instantly because of the sudden equalization of pressures. I'm sure I don't have that 100% technically correct, but maybe a physicist or engineer or something can chime in in the comments and straighten out my analogy. Now let's do another bag of green beans and go through the actual steps of using this machine. First off, I'll choose my setting. This machine has a very convenient auto vacuum setting that I'm sure I'll use most of the time. All I need to do is choose my bag size, either small, medium, or large. There's a little ruler thingy right on the machine so I can be sure which size bag I'm using. And then press the smart vac button until the size I want is selected. I'm using a medium size bag for these beans. Once I have some beans in one of the bags, I just need to set it into the chamber with the opening facing the front of the machine. And there are these two little metal prongs, I guess I'll call them, that basically keep the bag slightly open. I just need to slide the bag over those prongs such that they're in between the two sides of my bag and making sure the bag is laying nice and flat. Now I'll close the lid and the machine will automatically turn on. And while I'm going to run this machine a bunch of times during this video to demonstrate different things, this will be the only time I let it run its entire cycle uninterrupted. It would get pretty long and boring if I didn't do some jump cuts and fast forwarding because a full smart vac cycle takes around 45 seconds. And by the way, the tinted glass of this lid makes it a little difficult to see inside the chamber, but we'll do the best we can. The machine looks really slick in my opinion, but this smoked glass isn't especially conducive to videography. Once the vacuum motor turns off, all is quiet for a few seconds as the heating element seals the bag. Then, I will simultaneously hear the air being released from the chamber and see the bag immediately implode. 
a final beep sound tells me that the cycle is finished and I can remove my sealed bag. And let me point out something that I really like about this machine. The heating element that seals the bag is actually a double sealer of sorts. You can see that it melts the bag in two strips for an extra level of sealing. This is a very nice touch. Now for the thing I'm particularly excited about and what is, in my opinion, the number one thing that makes this type of machine superior to a suction style vacuum sealer. That's right, soup, or really any liquids. The problem with suction machines is that they suck. This means if you're trying to vacuum seal a bag of liquid or even a particularly juicy piece of meat or something, the machine is going to try sucking that liquid out of the bag as demonstrated with this tomato salsa. Not only does this cause a big liquidy mess inside your machine, but that liquid also inhibits the heating element, obstructing the bag from properly sealing. But as I mentioned, the chamber vacuum sealer does not suck anything out of the bag. It uses pressure differential to vacuumify the contents of your bag. Now let's do that same salsa in the WeVac chamber machine. I will note that it's important not to fill the bag more than about halfway. That's because when I lay it down in the machine, I don't want it spilling out of the open end. I'm going to use the same SmartVac setting for medium sized bags, close the lid, and a little fast forward action right up to the moment of truth, and presto. A perfectly vacuum sealed bag of sloshy, liquidy salsa. Taking a look inside the machine, there's not so much as a speck of food or liquid on any surface in there. And just out of purely idiotic curiosity, I kind of wanted to see how durable these bags and the seal are. So I decided to try dropping it on the cement driveway several times from about seven feet up. Some obvious scratches on the bag, but not a split, tear, or even leak to speak of. Not too shabby. But salsa is still a bit viscous, you say. It's not entirely liquid. Well, how about some brothy beef soup? The results are no different. Perfectly vacuumed, perfectly sealed. There is one important thing to know about using this sort of a machine for liquids. If there's one catch, this is it. You can't seal hot liquids or even particularly warm liquids. Water in a vacuum boils at about 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which is practically room temperature, versus 212 degrees ordinarily. What this means is that if you put already hot liquid in the machine, it will literally start boiling right there in the bag. And this will cause an awful mess in your machine and almost certainly lead to a failed seal. I decided not to demonstrate this because I just couldn't bring myself to trash my pretty new machine. So if you're sealing up a batch of something you just made, let it cool completely to room temperature, or better yet, put it in the fridge for a while so it's nice and cool. You're about to stick these bags in the freezer anyway, so refrigerating isn't gonna hurt anything. How about a couple other examples? I'm big into sausage making, and I vacuum seal and freeze a ton of links in an average year. I always flash freeze them before vacuum sealing though, so the suction and compression of the bag doesn't squish and mangle my links. So I'm very curious if the nature of how this machine works will treat my sausage any differently if I didn't harden them up in the freezer first. Using a couple store-bought brats as to not risk sacrificing some of my beautiful homemade links, I'll give it a try. I'd say they're not as squished as with the food saver, but they're still a bit squished. I'll mention that I could have used the custom vacuum setting on the machine, which is said to be ideal for more delicate foods that you don't want to crush, but honestly, I have no idea how long it should need. Maybe when I get more experienced using this thing, I'll get a feel for it. I guess I'll just continue flash freezing my sausage and other squishable foods. Now let's try some dry sealing. I'll do some ordinary white rice. This is really no different than anything. Load up the bag, stick it in the machine, and let her rip. And I will say that this is incredibly vacuum sealed. I think that's the tightest block of rice I've ever seen. I could probably hammer a nail with this thing. And speaking of dry sealing, you know I love sealing dry goods in mason jars using the accessory port on my food saver. Well, the WeVac also has an accessory port and it comes with this little hose. The connector on the end is reversible depending on the sort of container you're sealing. I think they make some specific food containers with ports on them that work with this, but I am just curious if it'll work with my regular food saver jar attachment for mason jars. This end sticks in there okay, but it doesn't feel incredibly snug. Let's give it a try anyway. Now for this I'm going to use the marinate slash accessories button. 
The machine has a marinate feature that I don't really understand the usefulness of, so I'm not going to really spend any time talking about it, but the same button is also used for the accessory port. It doesn't run the full chamber sealing cycle, but rather just regular old suction. My hope is that it will work as well as it does when I use the food saver with this jar attachment. And I'd say it does. The lid is fully sealed and the middle is completely pressed in. I'd say that's a winner. Now one last thing I wanted to try is something I saw on some other videos, and that's dry sealing a mason jar by putting the entire thing inside the chamber. Obviously this jar won't fit in there standing upright, so I have to lay it down, which means I have to put a ring on it so the lid stays put. And I don't fully understand how it's going to create a vacuum inside that jar if it's already closed tight, but it works when hot water or pressure canning, so who am I to doubt it? I have no idea how long to run it for and it's not a bag, so the auto feature doesn't make sense. So I'll just try a custom vac setting and see what happens. And sure enough, it seems totally sealed. I have no way of knowing whether 100% of the air was removed, but that lid is sure sealed firmly in place. I'll probably just continue using the jar attachment rather than putting the entire jar inside the machine, but it's cool to know that I have the option anyway. Now let's discuss some of the pros and cons between buying this type of machine versus the classic food saver style machine. There's no question that the chamber machine is bigger and heavier. I'm not going to be fitting this thing into one of my kitchen cupboards. It's basically the same size as my laser printer. And it's more costly. The full retail price of this WeVac machine at the time of making this video is $499. You can get a no-name knockoff suction style machine for like $24 and a real food saver brand machine from anywhere between $80 and $340. Though I'll mention that WeVac does make a smaller, cheaper chamber style machine that comes in at $299. But flexibility, features, capabilities, and quality cost more and they always have. And that's what I believe I'm getting from this WeVac machine. I can seal more types of things namely liquids, I can customize how I want them to seal, and it's my opinion that the quality of seal is higher. And I watch a lot of restaurant and cooking shows, and I've noticed that a lot of commercial kitchens featured on these shows are using chamber style vacuum machines for sous vide and marinating and all sorts of things. But I've never seen a suction style machine on one of those shows in those kitchens. Oftentimes, when I'm considering buying something, I look at what the professionals are using. One quick note about the bags. In this video, I'm using the smooth bags that came with the machine. These smooth, non-embossed bags will only work with a chamber vacuum machine. For an external suction machine, you need the embossed bags. That being said, the embossed bags will work in the chamber machine. I already have a million bags and rolls of the embossed stuff, including the two big boxes that WeVac just sent me, so I'll just be using those. So yeah, soups, sauces, vegetables, meat, dry goods, and even mason jars. This thing pretty much vacuum seals anything. All in all, I'm thoroughly impressed by the WeVac C12 machine, and I definitely recommend it if you're in the market for one of these chamber style vacuum sealers. If you wanna check out the machine for yourself, be sure to use the link and coupon code that I put in the video description below to get 15% off the purchase price. That's a free 75 bucks, so don't miss out on that. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future vacuum sealing videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.